Hey guys, it's Luke. I recently bought Chris McDougall's bestseller, Born to Run. And it's kind of been reaffirming a childhood mentality that I've rather lost in the past four years at engineering college. Uh, as a kid, even in high school, I loved going barefoot, wearing very thin shoes. I liked being, feeling the sense of adventure, uh, boyishness, you, you might call it primitive or animalistic nature. Um, but always being in basketball, track, and baseball, I always had to have some kind of special footwear. And I always had twisted ankles and pain in my knees. I thought it was just because I was flat-footed, like my parents told me. I mean, I had arch supports custom-made in my shoes for nearly a decade. My second year at college, I got into rock climbing, which was very similar to barefootedness in that, as a kid, I loved to climb trees and at the Y and ropes courses and whatnot, but I never knew it was a real thing, like something people did as a sport. Now, getting excited by the sense of joy and purity expressed by several of the characters in this book, I'm pulling out my two-year-old minimalist shoes, watching technique videos, and dreaming a sort of StarCraft to Marathon transformation. But I want to point out something that I never see mentioned in the minimalist running literature. Well, it's a good thing authors and physical therapists talk about how all this padding in modern shoe encourages poor technique by decreasing feedback, uh, also shocks the knee and spine from heel impact, and weakens the muscles in the foot. They never seem to compare the mechanics of the human foot with the equipment sported by other members of the animal kingdom. When I was a little kid playing in sprinklers, I liked walking across the driveway on the front of my foot, heel off the ground. The footprints of water left on the concrete looked to my imaginative little brain like they belonged to a bear or a huge dog. Now this is an interesting connection because looking at the structure of the bones and muscles in our leg, we have the same number of joints as dogs do in their rear legs. Ever wonder how a tiny dog can run so much faster than you? It's not necessarily because of four legs. I mean, the front legs are like front wheels of a rear-wheel drive car. They're mostly for support and steering. The power and speed comes from the rear, which has its ankle high off the ground, nearly doubling the shock absorption and increasing potential energy of the system. If you look for a heel landing technique in animals, you end up comparing to gorillas and other primates who have evolved from moving through trees and hanging from branches. They're slower than humans on the ground and have nothing like our endurance. Dogs, wolves, cats also lack human endurance, but the quickness of their gait and movement is undeniable. I'm, I'm not really sure if this insight adds much to the discussion. I'm s certainly no biomechanic or PT, but I wanted to share it since I've never seen that point made before. The same front foot stance that gives dogs mobility and speed can give runners grace and stability while strengthening muscles and keeping the feedback system connected to what's going on in the mechanical system instead of blocking it with rubber and composites.